Oh, quilters, it's an exciting day. That's right, this is Rob Appel from So Well Stitch in Heaven's YouTube channel, and I'm super excited. I just got an email telling me it's time to check the mailbox. There's a little something special waiting for us. Ooh, this is gonna be exciting, folks. Uh, just kind of like, oh, kind of get the, get the hold of this. Mm. Ooh, it's a little stuck. Kind of, ah. Oh my gosh, that was a lot bigger than I thought. Looks like it's a new quilting machine. Let's get inside and give this thing a try. Can you guys even hear that? Can you believe this? It's the most exciting day ever. I get this awesome new sewing machine. I'm dying to show you how it all works and my neighbor is rocking out right now. No, I love my neighbor, Bob. He's great. He is a uh, former uh, Vietnam veteran, and so he often hangs out pretty much by himself. So he's obviously having a very positive day over there. The rock and roll is blaring. So I'm going to go ahead and show you around this machine. I apologize about the background noise, but that is joy, joy, joy. So let's get started. Hey, it's a party. We may as well join him if we can't beat him, right? I am super excited to welcome to the set this awesome handy quilter quilting machine. It's called the Stitch 510, or maybe we should call it the 510 so it sounds super official or something like that. But there's a couple of reasons I'm super, super excited to introduce this machine in here to my sewing room for technically what is the second time in my life. And this is the original. This is the first one. It was made under a different name at that point. Folks, these models are models that are like what we call OEM. This is made by an outside manufacturing company for sewing machine manufacturers. These models have been around for years and they are incredible. And I'm gonna spend a few moments today walking you through the features that I love so much. So originally I was gonna do this really cool unboxing video. I had this thing sealed in the plastic and I recorded about 15 minutes of the true excitement as I unpacked it and I realized this machine was basically identical with a few upgrades to this machine that I've had for about 12 years. But unfortunately, I was so excited I forgot to turn on the microphones. So therefore, it would be a silent movie which would not be nearly as entertaining because I was trying to tell you all about the great features of the Handy Quilter 510510 Stitch Machine. It is a super cool straight stitch only machine geared up perfectly for patchwork free motion machine quilting, or some of your kind of mid-industrial style sewing. Lots of bags, denim work, I've done boat cover repair, lots of heavy duty sewing on these. And like I said, I took this machine years ago. This was where I really found my quilting took the biggest step in my history. Um, I was sewing on a standard machine and trying to do all of my free motion machine quilting seated. And all of a sudden, you know, this machine came out, we were a dealer, at that point for these models and I got one and I fell in love with it and it really changed my ability to free motion machine quilt. So we do sell these machines here at Stitch in Heaven and you can purchase them online and I'm going to be talking a lot about this machine. So if you've been looking for a great piecing and free motion quilting machine and you need some additional support from a guy like me, that's the other reason I'm super excited to now be able to offer the handy quilter to all of you here watching so well. So let me go ahead and take a moment and just set these out of the way. Folks, the first thing about the machine, and I'm going to keep saying that that I love so much, but it is heavy, heavy, heavy. And when you're free motion quilting, you don't want your machine slipping around, bouncing around, jumping around. And that thing is super, super solid. So that's one of the things I really do love about it. There's a couple of other features here, and I'm just going to show you on this side of the machine because I do want to sew on it here in a few moments, so easier than turning it back and forth, back and forth. But first of all, the machine here comes with a speed regulation device. And what that means is I can set this here from the snail all the way up to the super fast jackrabbit, and this machine will pace itself so that I can keep up with the machine, especially if I were learning free motion machine quilting. I teach folks that we want to be able to go slow so that we, what is it, pat our head, rub our belly at the same time kind of thing. But over time, you will become more proficient when machine quilting, especially on a machine like this. And so you're going to want to kick that speed up a little bit so that eventually you're moving faster and more fluidly and the machine can then keep up with it while you're the whole time you're pedal to the metal. Let me stop there too as I jump ahead. With this machine, 
there are a couple of upgrades and accessories that you can pick up from the Handy Quilter dealer or us at Stitch in Heaven. And, and we're gonna talk about a few of those. Those are more along the free motion package. So let me try to stay focused on piecing first. And the other thing I love about the machine within piecing especially is that the reverse lever is over here. And the intention is not to take my hand off of my project and reach it here, but I can actually catch it here with my elbow, which is really cool. So I can have hands on the project, especially if I was doing Doing heavy duty sewing and I needed to, maybe I was manipulating um, some heavy duty home deck material around the corner of a pillow or something and being able to have that reverse feature is awesome on the elbow. But you do want to be careful because right there is what is your automatic thread cutter button. So this thing is terrific. That'll cut your threads, top and bobbin, no problems, no questions asked, moving on. Now, one of the upgrade features, and I did just check this, my machine was one of the first built. So watch this folks, this is amazing. Especially when we get into the free motion. When you're doing free motion, you're often gonna be using a hopping foot, or if you get the accessory package, you'll be using this really cool floating foot that you could adjust to the thickness of the different quilts. But what's gonna happen there is, um, you're not gonna be able to tell if your foot is up or down. So if I hit my gas pedal right now, watch, nothing is happening. I've got red and green lights flashing right here. I hope you can see that here on my side camera. But it's like a warning. It's telling me your foot is not down. Your foot is not down. Folks, I know. And if you haven't done this, let me know in the comments below so I can call you a liar. If you ever have not done free motion with your presser foot up. Now folks, you know I've been teaching this and if you haven't seen, there's a bunch of great videos on machine maintenance and thread tension and needles and things like that. But yes, if your presser foot is up, you're gonna have this giant ball of thread underneath your project or your quilts, especially free motion. So yes, you want your foot down. So if the foot's down, then the machine will run. But if the foot is up, this machine will not run. There's a safety switch up inside, kind of like your blender or your Cuisinart. Really awesome, right? Jumping ahead earlier too, I was going through, I, like I said, I did this wonderful video. I just didn't have any audio recorded to it. Um, there's an accessory tray that comes with it. So these are from my old machine, okay? So it was the extra stitch plate. So we're gonna come back to those, but you're gonna get a few bobbins. Not that that's all that important, but this is something that's super cool. And I've had a lot of questions in a lot of my videos in the past. Where do you get an edge guide and what are the best kinds of edge guides? So this machine comes with an edge guide and it comes with the screw so that this can be fastened down here on the bed of the machine so that you can set whatever seam allowance you want with the foot. Again, if you're doing industrial sewing, you might be wanting to do like a 5-8 style seam allowance for a boat cover or something you're gonna top stitch that seam uh, again or French seams or something. So at any rate, you can adjust this really cool that way and that is really awesome. However, there's two other features that I think make this machine superior. One, it's a simple one, and I'm not even sure. Let me bring this over a little bit so you can see it better. Folks, the machine has its own built-in thread stand, and not only that does this thread tower go up and down, but you can mount both your uh, needle thread up front, and behind here is for your bobbin. The machine will wind its bobbin. If I just kick this over right here and touch a button, no hands, no feet on the foot control, and it's just spinning like crazy right now. So I can really be set up and not have to unthread my needle thread, especially if I was quilting. Think about how important that is, right? Machine offers needle down. What else could you want? And even better than that, there is an awesome rotary um, style hook, 360 degree, and the needle is gonna go straight down into the bobbin, and there's, so there's no bending of the threads or anything. It's very accurate, very precise, and there's a couple more things I wanna show you from the nerdy technical side that I love. Inside the bobbin case is a check spring, and that check spring keeps your bobbin from over-rotating if you're stopping while sewing really fast. You don't want that extra ball of thread in the bobbin, and you think about it, this machine's a, about 1,600 stitches a minute, so if you're flying and you stop, the bobbin tends to over-rotate, but this one's got a braking system inside, which is amazing. Again, especially if you're using it for free motion quilting, which I absolutely love. Your bobbins will load just like a regular bobbin, but you may not want to have as much tension on this bobbin case. So as I give it the drop test, it's dropping a couple of inches, 
And often I'll even do a test where I set the bobbin case on the table and then I lift it, but I don't want to be able to pick it up off the table. So at the moment, this bobbin tension may be just a bit tight for me, but like I said, this machine is fresh out of the box. I have not stitched on it yet. I really wanted to give you a real honest impression fresh out of the box and I forgot the microphones. So at any rate, let's get back into this. I've got the orange thread now loaded in the bobbin. We've got this easy to access little trap door, which is awesome. And then I've also put in the green thread on the top. So as we do our first test, we can really see the differences uh, in our tension, right? Now, I want to point out real quick in case you're watching from home and you've just gotten this machine, as I said, the thread here closest to the needle is for the needle and it comes up and over and the first thing it comes to is your pretension. Pretension does not set tension, it helps knock the twist out of the thread. So this first pretensioner we do not need to have tight, we just want the thread running through it. And I like to have my thread come through the first hole, over the top of this bar, through the third hole, skipping the second altogether, into my tension discs, behind my real tension, and in my real tension system, my foot's open, my tension, is open, my foot's down, my tension's closed. Check spring, there's a thread guide to your take up lever, back down, thread guide here, the hardest one to get, there's a thread guide behind the needle over here and I hold it like floss and I kind of reach my finger around and let it pop out of my finger. So if the machine comes unthreaded, I can show you that again as well. I have my stitch length right now set for two and a half. And what I first want to do is just listen to this machine and I want to um, run a quarter inch basically and I want to check my tension. So right now I'm in turtle mode, the slowest the machine will go and I'm going to push on the gas. Oh, that's nice and quiet, isn't it? Okay, so that is full speed turtle mode. Very easy to just watch, keep up with. Sounds beautiful, doesn't it? Okay, right now I'm just checking my tensions. Fantastic, I can see a bit of the green popping through and a bit of the orange on the top, setting that beautiful stitch. The pre-tension, I, I won't be able to find it here, but if you've ever had a machine that does a really bad, I call it the drunken sailor walk, the drunken sailor stitch that really loops over, that's because your thread's getting so twisted as it tries to travel through the machine. Something has to control the twist. Think of like that old nasty garden hose all kinked up and full of water as you're trying to wind it back onto the reel, right? So that really helps keep a really, really pretty stitch. I mean, that is gorgeous. Okay, now folks, are you ready? I'm going up to jackrabbit mode, super speeder, and slow it into it. So remember, I can still totally control this, but if I go full speed, woo-wee! Little harder to keep in control, but you can see that feed was taking it nice and fast. I'm gonna hit that thread cutter. Ho oh, ho, love that button. Fantastic, okay. And so when it cut the threads though, it left just about a half of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch of both threads. Perfect, but if I were machine quilting with this, I would still be bringing my thread tail up. But when I owned the orange version, I cut threads all the time this way. It was awesome for free motion quilting. So it's pretty simple that way. Um, now, I know a lot of you, when you first get the machine, probably won't get the accessories, but if you're looking at getting it for free motion machine quilting, I strongly suggest you do. So I do want to take another minute here while we can, and let's switch this into free motion mode just to show you all how easy it really is. Now, this machine doesn't drop the feed dog, so I just set my feed dogs to zero. You'll notice your reverse lever no longer is active because there's no give on the feed. I'm gonna loosen out these two screws and I'm also gonna take off the standard presser foot, which is basically a quarter inch presser foot. Let's get these screws out of here. These are gonna be those standard beveled screws. But what I'm gonna do is with what came in that accessory tray is an extra thick stitch plate. So this is gonna prevent my fabric from feeling the feed dogs moving up and down, even though they won't be going back and forth because they're now set to zero. This machine is considered a high speed sewing machine. So you're gonna be wanting to use the HLX5 needle system. Those came with this machine um, and they come in a variety of sizes. But if you're not aware, HLX5 is designed for a high speed machine and it will really keep your stitches running beautiful as you're sewing. 
Um, so not using the standard needle system, okay? But very easy to find. Okay, so I just put this on and maybe it'd be best if I show you all. It's about twice as thick. So that is gonna prevent those feed dogs from coming up and touching the fabric. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just take a moment and lock these back down for safety mostly. And I never tighten them like they come from the factory because I'm taking them in and out all the time. They just need to be tight enough to hold the stitch plate down. And because these are beveled screws, they're gonna put the stitch plate back down nice so that it stays accurate to your feed dog. So you can't just run, grab extra screws out of the old coffee can in the garage if you lose any of these. So do not lose these screws, folks. If you do, call your manufacturer, call your dealer, get the right screw, okay? Cover plate back on. Okay, and now, just to make life easy, I'm just gonna put on a standard hopping presser foot. This is gonna ride on the needle bar. Um, it's just gonna jump up and down. You've seen me use this foot in other videos, of course. But the cool thing about this, and if you're not aware, this particular machine is high shank. So you really wanna get the feet that are designed for this machine, especially due to the, the strength and power of this machine. But that being said, high shank feet are technically the size that you're looking for. Okay. I'm gonna drop a regular batting sample in here. I've got a little bit of uh, batting that I don't even know what kind of batting it is. I've got some cotton fabric up top here. I've got some cotton fabric on the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower my presser foot. See, you can't even tell if the presser foot's up or down. And that's why that little safety switch is awesome. I wish I would've had that on mine. Cause I really used to make that mistake a lot. Okay, foot's down. See, I still check it. Okay, now I'm gonna take one stitch manually here. And the other cool thing I didn't mention, but because I use the thread cutter, it's gonna be really hard to bring that thread tail up. Good, and you're not watching so close that you can see it anyways, right? So had I used the thread cutter, then I would just take a few stitches in place. Okay, I wanna make sure that my needle gate down is engaged. So the button next to the bobbin button is needle down. When it's red, that means it stops in the down. So if I'm stitching, I'm sewing, I'm quilting, no problem, right? But watch, let's say I do thread cut, foot, excuse me, needle is up, I could clear my system, but as I start to sew again, tying in and I stop, the needle stays in the down position. So that's something else I want you to remember both for safety and efficiency is your needle down once you turn the machine on will stay there even after you've used your thread cutter button. So at any rate, um, let's just do a, a moment of free motion here because we can and it's fun. I probably should have put the fabric the other way so you could have had the green on the white fabric on the back and the orange here on the top. but. You can see how nice it sounds. There is no stitch regulator going. And I wish I did have my sew slip mat in place because, or my gloves on, because that's just what I'm personally used to. But it runs great and like I said, I can adjust my speed to make that free motion really come into balance nicely. Now the other accessory I'm gonna really strongly encourage you to get is one of what they call the So Steady Tables. It's a clear plastic table, 18 inches by 24 inches. This is the original qu quilter table that came with my machine, like I said, about 12 years ago. It has the pop-up feet and everything. So I'll get the accessory table soon. But you can see by having the bed like this, now what this does for my quilting body, it lowers my shoulders, gets everything nice and simple in here. And now I can really start to feel comfortable and move and play and have a good old time. And even though I could do that for hours, I probably should stop, folks. And let me just teach you this trick real quick. Not using the thread cutter when I stop so that I have a longer tail when I start. That's what I'm into now as a free motion quilter. So now I'm just gonna actually hand crank a couple of stitches in place uh, so that nothing moves, okay? And then I'm just gonna lift the presser foot and slide the fabric over. I'm gonna actually kind of pull up on that knot and I pulled so hard I broke the thread. But normally I would have cut the knot and that would actually generally cut my bobbin thread tail 
as well. That is the start and stop from when I did not, when, excuse me, when I did use the thread cutter, right? It's gonna leave a ball of thread underneath because you can't hang on. There's the cut at the end. So here's our other stop right there. Much more attractive, that's what you're looking for in the real world of free motion machine quilting. Piecing with the thread cutter is amazing, but once I got really, really into beautiful machine quilting, I stopped using the thread cutter because I didn't want to leave something that I had to tend to later, stitches and or the needle thread as I restarted. That's what you're after. So at any rate, folks, you can see I could talk about this machine and I will in a bunch of the videos to come. We're just gonna leave it right here. We're gonna do a bunch of piecing with it. So thank you very much, Deb. I really appreciate the new sewing machine. Thank you, Handy Quilter. I think it was awesome, folks. They gave me the choice of which machine we wanted to put here to share with all of you because the Handy Quilters are available online with us at Stitch in Heaven. And this machine I chose specifically because I love it so much and I have such a history with this model and how they run. So if I can be of help, please fire me off an email, rob at stitchinheaven.com and let me know what kind of technical questions you may have on this style of a machine. Um, I would love to make sure that you're getting your questions answered especially if you're considering purchasing one. Um, I think they're gonna be awesome. If you're not aware, I'm also doing some live videos on Fridays where we're doing a lot of free motion, either on the long arm across the room, or we'll be doing a lot of videos now with this. So please let me know in the comments below also what kind of motifs you would like to learn, what kind of quilting challenges you've been up against. And I can try to answer a lot of those questions live on video on Fridays. And last little piece of information advertisement style wise is we just opened up a so well private Facebook group where we can all hang out and really support each other and share our quilt photos with each other and all of that. So I'm encouraging you all to go ahead Go on uh, Facebook and just search for So Well, uh, the Facebook group there, and then I will let you in. Uh, there's no private code words or anything like that. You just have to agree to the rules, which are to be covered in thread and covered in joy and uh, having a great time. So at any rate, folks, I'm so glad I was able to share with you um, my joy of this wonderful new machine. I think we're going to have a blast learning about it. Like I said, please let me know what questions you may have. And until I have another great tutorial for you, Stay well, folks. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.